In this episode, I'll show you how you can use the metadata in Lightroom to improve your photography skills. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Well, one of the questions that I get a lot is which lens should I buy that's better than my kit lens? In fact, I was talking about this to another photographer that I know named Jared Platt, and he has a method that he talked to me about that I think is amazing, and that's using the data in Lightroom, the metadata, all the stuff that comes off of your photos to figure out which lens you should buy when you're upgrading. And uh, as we were talking, I discovered that there are some things that you could do with that metadata that can help out in addition to answering that question. In fact, you can use this method to figure out things like, is there a problem with my workflow? Or uh, am I stuck in a rut with certain lenses or aperture values? Are there some blind spots in my photography that I don't know about? So we're going to take this methodology that I learned from Jared, and we're going to put it into practice, and we're going to dive into Lightroom and figure out if there's a way that we can improve our photography using data. Well, let's first take a look at this metadata and how you get to it inside of Lightroom. Now, this is uh, true of all versions of Lightroom. I'm in Lightroom 5 right now. The important thing is over on the left-hand side, make sure that you choose all photographs because we want to look at our entire catalog and be able to look at the aggregate data. In, in other words, all the data sort of rolled up into lump sums. So make sure you choose all photographs here so you get all of the data from all of the photographs that are in your library. Of course, you can filter that for some reason if you need to, but we're going to look at everything right now. Now, the other thing is at the very, very top of Lightroom, there are these four little words here, text, attribute, metadata, and none. We're going to look at metadata. So what none does, if we click that, it just sort of erases anything that you may have set up. And these are normally used for filtering data or filtering photos. So for example, let's say I want to find a video that I shot with the 5D Mark II. Well, I can go into the metadata and then I have these little uh, fields here that I can choose. So by default, there's date and camera and some other things. So let's go in here and I'll choose instead of date. What I want to do is I want to look at file type. And then I can look in here and say video. And then over here, I've got camera set up. And so I've got five different cameras. And I want to look at this one right here. This is the 5D Mark II. And so when I zoom out, here are all the videos that I shot with the 5D Mark II. And then we can open up this picture right here. And sure enough, here is a little video that was shot with the 5D Mark II. And it makes it really easy to find uh, images and videos and things like that. So that's normally how this is used is you would use the metadata to locate things. And so what we want to do though is to use this metadata to help teach us about our blind spots and uh, help us understand the gear that we use and maybe some upgrade paths that we have. And so for example, when I was talking to Jared, he was saying that there were a lot of people that wanted to know which lens they should upgrade. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to click none here to just open this up so I have all of my images again. I'll click on metadata. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and say, well, what I really want to do is I want to take a look at this image right here, this uh, camera right here. This is the Canon Rebel T3i. It's a camera that I don't shoot a lot, but I'm choosing that camera because it would emulate, let's say I had, a, I was a beginning photographer, I had a, an entry level camera with a kit lens, and I really want to figure out what kit lens do I use the most and how do I use it so I know what to upgrade if I'm going to buy a little bit higher quality lens. And so by choosing this, I see some other things. Over here, I've chosen lens. And so you can choose all kinds of things, but I'm going to choose lens. And then I can see all the lenses that were used with my Rebel. And then I have some counts over here so I can see which lenses I'm using most. And notice that the EFS 18 to 55, I've used 210 times. That's the one I've used the more than anything else is this one. Uh, and then uh, the second by sort of a distant second is my 24 to 70. That's an L lens, so that's a, a fancy lens. Um, and then I've got my 18 to 200, etc. And I've got my 12, 120 to 300. So let's figure out how am I using this kit lens to help me understand what lens I might want to upgrade to. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna choose this lens 
And then uh, also when I'm choosing these, the view is being filtered. So this is all the images from a rebel uh, that are using this lens. So that's what's showing up down here. But what I wanna see is now I know the camera and I know the lens. Let's see what focal lengths I'm using. Am I using the uh, 18 millimeter side or the 55 millimeter side? Am I zooming in, zooming out? How am I using this? So what I'll do is I can go in now and choose focal length. And so now I can see all of the different focal lengths that I've used. And by looking through these, I can see which ones are the most popular for me. And look, one jumps out immediately. So this right here, 55 millimeters, I've used that 86 times. And everything else is 10 or less, or maybe 13 or less. So obviously I'm using the long end of the lens almost always with this lens. And so what I would do next is say, okay, if I'm always using a 55 millimeter end of this lens or most of the time, what would happen if I looked at a lens that had more than 55 millimeter? Am I even going longer? So we'll uh, click on this one. This is a 24 to 70. And when I look at that, I'm using the 55 a little bit, but look at 70, I'm using more than anything else. So again, I'm going to the long end even of this lens. What about a really long lens? So we have two of them here, a 70 to 300 millimeter. That's a, a kit lens. And when I cycle through that, look, I'm only using that at 200 millimeters. When I look at my 120 to 300, I'm using that at 269 millimeters. So you can see that of all the lenses that I'm using, I tend to shoot at the long end of the lens. And on this one right here, look at this. I used one shot, 18 millimeters, four shots at 22, and everything else at 24 uh, shots I used at 200 millimeters. Let's check the 18 to 270. And you can see that one I used sort of across the board. So that one's pretty easy to see that, well, I've used sort of everything in that lens. So the result of this would tell me that of all the lenses I'm using, I tend to go all the way and zoom in as much as possible in all my lenses. So if I'm going to spend money on a nicer lens, um, then what I would probably need to do is look at that 70 to 200 millimeter range at a nicer lens, because that looks like that's the way I'm shooting, and that could help me make that decision. Now, if I saw the other end where I'm using all my kit lenses and I'm shooting mostly at the wide angle part of the lens, well, I could use the wide angle lens. So that's one thing that I love about metadata. You can dig in and see how you're shooting. But the other thing you can do with metadata, and this is, I think, the genius part of this, is you can expose blind spots that you have. For example, what if I wanted to know um, where I shoot? And so I'm just gonna ask the question, where is it that I shoot? I don't know, like what location, physical location do I shoot? Well, I'm gonna go in here, instead of choosing camera, I'm gonna go in here and choose location. And look, I've got Bangalore, India, and Eaton Business Park, I don't even know where that is, and Hell's Kitchen, and then Snap Factory Studio. And most of these, no location, 17,880 images in this catalog. And this, by the way, is my small Lightroom catalog, have no uh, location information, which means I'm not doing a very good job at putting location information on my images. So that's a blind spot to me. I didn't realize that. I, uh, I'm not really putting stuff in here very much. You can also look at city. So we'll look at that. Oh, well, now we have New York and Phoenix and Tempe and unknown. So I'm just curious what I shot here. Oh, cool, look at this. Here's a shot of, uh, this is an iPhone shot of me and James Nocturne, one of my heroes. And this was shot in uh, Hell's Kitchen, actually. This is at the Javits Center a few years ago. And so, anyway, you can use this to sort of understand uh, all kinds of things. So right now, I just learned, man, I need to do a better job with location data. Well, let's look at some other blind spots and see if we can discover some other things that I'm not doing so well. So let's go in here. Again, I'm going to go to all, so I'm seeing everything. Instead of city, what I'm going to do here is let's look at... Um, Oh, let's take a look at our aspect ratio. Why would I look at the aspect ratio? Well, let's look and see the kinds of images that I shoot. Well, I shoot predominantly landscape images. Now, does that make sense? Well, for this catalog, it does, because this catalog is used exclusively for Adorama TV videos, and videos are horizontal, in other words, landscape, and so I shoot primary landscape. With my uh, library that were for models, uh, you would see that most of them would be in portrait orientation. So that makes sense. So there's no blind spot there. That makes total sense to me. Um, what about this? If, let's go in and look at some dates. I love just diving into this. So if we go in here and we'll look at some dates. So let's see, date. And I want to look at images from 2010 and forward. So 2010, 11, 12, and 13. So that's pretty much uh, when I've been shooting 
uh, Adorama TV. And what I want to know is which cameras am I using? Because a lot of people say, you know what, you only shoot with Canon cameras or you only shoot with Nikon cameras. Well, how come you never use, you know, this brand of camera? Let's just see. Well, it turns out that I've used 31 different cameras when I've been shooting for Adorama TV. So we've got a lot of Canons. So we've got the 5D Mark II, Mark III, 70D, 60D, the Rebels, uh, the 1D Mark IV, 1DS Mark II. We've got these guys here. Um, and so this is a Mamiya camera, this right here. Uh, I'm looking on the right-hand side. This is a Panasonic camera. So we've got all those. We've got some iPhone pictures. We've got some Sonys. We've got a lot of Nikons, tons of Nikons in here. We've got a Sigma. We've got my Fujifilm X-Pro1, the X10. And so you can see that uh, we try to keep it pretty even, regardless of what people say. So we check that to say, hey, we're shooting equal amounts of different cameras. Looks like we are. But which cameras am I shooting most? Here's something I, I found very interesting. So the Nikon D3S, I've shot 4,075 images for this for Adorama TV. The D4, only 544. And this was interesting because uh, this should be backwards. I should have been shooting a lot more with the D4. It's a newer camera. But, uh, and I told Nikon this, I think the D3S is a better camera than the D4, even though it's a newer camera. They didn't like it when I said that, but I actually uh, stuck with my D3S and I got great results. So that makes sense to me. What about the Canons? Well, look at this. The Canons, it looks like I haven't shot as much with that. So the 1DS Mark II is the clear winner, but less than 2,000. So it looks like less than half the images have been shot with my Canon than with my Nikon. And that works pretty well, but if I add in all the dates and we look at this, then we see a different picture altogether. And you can see that when I zip in here now, that zips up to 5,000 images with my Canon and about 4,000 with the Nikon. So, you know, a lot of the images that I shot previously are being used, so we're still trying to be consistent. So that makes sense. But what about this? Let's say I want to uh, learn a little bit about my strengths and weaknesses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself a different question. Which aperture values um, do I use with photos that I choose? In other words, the photos that I pick, that I, I flagged. So what I can do is I can start to combine things. I can get this attributes. I can click flag. And that's going to just show me the images that I've flagged as good. So we've got all kinds of lightning pictures and things like that. And then I can go into metadata. So it still has all the flagged pictures only. And I can filter it even more. So I'm going to go in here to aperture value. And so this is up here, right here. We have aperture. So I'll choose aperture. And then I can look at these counts to see where am I shooting. And so 1.2, I've got 44 pictures. Look at this, 2.8, that just stands out. I've got 231 images that are uh, 2.8 images. And then we zip through here, we've got some other ones. We see 5.6 starts to stand out. Why 5.6? Why well, it looks like these are the kit lenses. So that's about as wide as these lenses will go. So I'm seeing this pattern where I really enjoy the wide uh, open apertures, so that nice shallow depth of field. And then... Uh, 11 and 13 are about equal, and that's because of studio photography. I know I'm there. But look at this. When we zip up here to the 2022 range, not very many pictures at all. And so you can see that I'm not using a closed down aperture really very much at all. And so that's something that shows me that I need to maybe uh, start shooting for a greater depth of field to try to get more scenic photography. And so I can look at that and say, is that true? Do I do any scenic photography? Well, let's try this. Scenic photography is usually used with a wide angle lens. So I'm going to go back here to all. And then what I'll do is I'll change this to lens. And let's just look. Do I have wide angle lenses that I'm using? And it looks like when I zoom in on this, in the wide angle lens area, uh, these are sort of uh, uh, kit lenses as well. But look, they're not very many images. This right here, this is a very expensive lens. I only have 48 pictures. 48 that are uh, marked as good. And if I can say uh, undo that. So even that, only 217 out of all the pictures I've ever taken have this lens being used. And I know I bought this lens because I was inspired by James Noctway, the guy I showed you earlier. And so it looks like I'm not getting my money's worth. I need to shoot more with that lens. I'm not really shooting as much as I could. And when I look through these, look at these are all people pictures, people and dogs, people and dogs. So I've got some lightning shots, people pictures, people pictures, people pictures. I have a huge black hole in my photography, which is I don't shoot very much scenic photography. 
Here's a shot that I shot with that lens in the redwoods. I love it. So that's a black, uh, a blind spot to me. I'm not getting outside and shooting enough scenic photography. And I can go through and look at some other of these, uh, these shots. And you can see here's the sweet spot for me. The 70 to 200 millimeter lenses are carrying the weight of almost everything. So I can see that I need to do more with my wide angle lenses because I'm just not getting there. All right, let's look at one more thing and then we'll be done with this. Um, so let's take a look at another metadata um, thing. So I have no more attributes here. So I'm gonna look at all of my uh, photos. And what I wanna do is I wanna see what is the treatment that I'm using? So this is the treatment to say, are these color, or are these black and white? And you can see that I'm not really processing my images as black and white. So I only have 180 images that are actually processed black and white in Photoshop. The rest of them I probably just used the desaturation slider so I could do a better job uh, with that. And so there are all kinds of really interesting photos here. Some of these were from uh, recent episodes of Adorama TV. These are really cool. Oh, here's one I really like. This is me getting hit in the face with a water balloon. Wham! Oh, that knocked a tooth out. It was crazy. Okay, so we've got that. Here's my profile picture. You can see how that works. So it looks like I need to do uh, some more experimentation on the treatments that I'm using. The other thing I want to do is let's look at, instead of treatment, let's look and see if we can look at our develop preset. So in here we've got a develop preset. And this is going to tell me one other thing about my workflow that is a possible problem. So I've got all these presets that I've created. So we've got Adorama Blue that I created for one of the Adorama uh, episodes. We've got this brown blue split. I think I did that for split toning. We've got all these different things here. Mark's black and white magic. The photo booth stuff that we set up when we did uh, photo booth. But look at this. We have all these unavailable presets. Unavailable preset. What is that? Well, let me click on one. And we can see... Uh, what these images are. Here's like 13 images. So we can see these are really highly saturated images. So what these are, these are presets that I've created in a different uh, uh, Adobe Lightroom catalog, probably on my laptop or a different computer, then I uh, imported from that catalog, but didn't bring the preset over with it. And so what I need to do is go on my laptop or my other uh, workstation and grab some of those presets that I've created and import those into this Lightroom catalog so I have those to be used for, uh, for other uh, images. Or I could just go to the develop module and create a preset based on this image. That could be easier as well. So I see I've got some gaps in my workflow and so I need to um, fix my develop presets so that I don't create one on one computer and miss it on the other. So there are all kinds of things here that we're discovering from our metadata. And my challenge to you is do this. Go in and ask yourself questions. Start slicing and dicing the data and see where you're doing great and where you need help and where you're blind to some of the things that you may not be doing well either in Lightroom or in your photography. Wow, well, I learned a few things about myself that I didn't know. I needed to do a better job of my uh, tagging and geolocations and keywording and all kinds of stuff. And I also need to practice a little bit more with my wide angle lenses. And so I hope you can use this methodology to improve your skills as a photographer and even answer those questions of what gear should I get next? Now you have some data to back that up. Remember, if you don't have Lightroom, you can always buy that at Adorama. Why not? You can order it online or zip into the store. We have those in stock. And remember, this stuff that I showed you today works in all versions of Lightroom. So this metadata stuff has been around uh, since the very, very beginning of Lightroom. And if you want to learn more about Lightroom and photography and different skills, make sure you zip over to the Adorama Learning Center. There are all kinds of tips and tutorials and articles and illustrations and videos. And uh, so you can check all that stuff out. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you again next week. In fact, I was talking to the, uh, Fudge. Shoo, shoo. Fudge, fudge. Can just go to the Fudge Sickles. Let me start over. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our Learning Center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews. 